Hello friends, welcome back. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. We made it a nut through another week. Um, first of all, before we do anything at all, I just want all of you guys, parents, give yourself a pat on the back. You deserve it. Seriously, you deserve this. Um, this week has become really apparent to me just how how intense this whole uh, thing is and how much we all need to support each other. And kids, if you're watching, give your moms and dads a hug. They need it this week, they really do. It's a lot, juggling, uh, working from home and helping you guys manage your schoolwork and helping you guys stay active and engaged and social. So it's a lot. So parents, you really deserve a special shout out today. I, I, I see you, I'm with you. All right, you guys, a couple of quick announcements before we do today's project. So this is the last project in our STEAM Play and Learn week. STEAM Play and Learn is my book and I am giving away seven, well, I should say seven pairs, so 14 copies of this over on Instagram. I will throw the link in the description below, but I really encourage you guys to go over there today and leave a comment by tagging a friend um, because the giveaway is going through today. So it closes later today. So if you wanna be entered in for a chance to win my book for you and the friend you tag, this is a gifting giveaway, then um, hop over there and uh, leave a comment, basically. That's all you need to do. If you wanna give us a follow, Babble Dabble Do on Instagram, that'd be awesome. If you want to follow my publisher, Quarto Kids, I'm sure they would absolutely adore that. They would be so happy. Um, but a big thank you to Quarto for hosting the giveaway as well. And this is also going to be the last week where I do a daily live. So from here on out, I'm gonna to go to a Tuesday, Thursday schedule. Um, partly because I'm just, I'm very busy. My kids are have a lot of busyness with school. Um, our school lasts for another month. And so we've got a lot of Zoom stuff happening and it's a lot to manage. And also I wanna bring you guys a whole bunch of new content. I'm sitting, not literally sitting on a lot of content, but I have a lot of things that we've done in our classes um, that I wanna share with you now that we're at home and I just haven't had a lot of time to put it together um, with the daily schedule. Also, I am gonna be on TikTok. Uh, TikTok is working with creators to uh, broaden their, um, to bring you guys more like educational stuff. It's called EduTalk. And so I am going to be on there uh, doing daily videos for a little while, um, sharing some of my projects in a very short format. So whereas I get on here and I talk for 20 minutes over there, it's going to be 20 seconds. So we're gonna see how that goes. But I invite you to go check me out on TikTok. I will go ahead and put the link to that in the description below as well. I literally just started the channel, but I am excited about it. It should be a fun to um, reach a new audience. So, and I love making videos. So I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. All right, so for today's project, we're gonna make a DIY toy that really gets kids into the design and engineering process. And that is our main goal. It's a very, very simple project. What you're gonna need is a box lid, so like a shoe box lid. Um, I'm gonna be making mine with an old, with a, not an old, but a pizza box lid. You're going to need some Play-Doh if you have it. If you don't have Play-Doh, you can make your own Play-Doh or you can use straws and glue. If you do have Play-Doh, you don't need glue, you just need the Play-Doh. And the last thing you're gonna need is a marble because what we're gonna make, and I will turn my camera around so you can see, is a marble maze, a little toy that you can use well, basically that you get to design. Oops, I have a little a little problem with my marble maze and we're gonna talk about that <laughs> in a minute. So we're gonna make one of these today. This is, let me show you really quick the project in my book. This is one of my, we usually introduce, we do this project at the beginning of the year with our students in our after school STEAM program because it's a great inter introduction to the design process and to STEAM in general. So what I love about this project is it's a chance for kids to design 
their own toy and really problem solve because I've never had anyone, myself included, who's been able to design one of these and have it work perfectly the way they wanted the first time. And so there's a lot of uh, problem solving and um, basically changing things around, modifications, things that you're gonna do with this project that really mimics the design and engineering process. And that's why it's so important. STEAM is all about experimenting, trying new things, making mistakes, changing things that don't work, realizing what does work, doing more of that, and, and finalizing a design over time. So that's what this project is all about. So that's one of the reasons why I love um, doing it with our, getting this project, um, bringing it to our students really early on in the year so they can really get a sense of what it means to design. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a box lid. For the demo I just did a little earlier, I used a small like gift box lid. I'm gonna go for it and use the pizza box for you guys. <laughs> we're also gonna need Play-Doh, like I mentioned. And here's what we're gonna do. So I will, I'm gonna start this by just showing you how we're gonna use the Play-Doh. And then we'll start putting it in the box. And then I will also show you when I put it in the box, how you can use straws if you don't have the Play-Doh. All right, so if you are using Play-Doh, what I show, what we share with our students in advance, so I like to give you guys a little technique or techniques in advance so you hit the ground running. Um, so we usually make Play-Doh snakes. And the reason being is the Play-Doh snakes will make a very nice, where's my, oh, I keep putting this underneath things, make a very nice wall that our marble will bump up against, okay? So to make a Play-Doh snake, you should grab a, a chunk of Play-Doh, and then you should kind of roll it into a ball, and then we're gonna start making it into a long, long coil, okay? If you've ever worked with clay before, this is how you make coils. So you kind of start rolling it under one hand, and then as it starts to form a cylinder, you're gonna take it with both hands, you're gonna press down and you're gonna slowly move your hands out as you are rolling it, okay? So as you roll it underneath your hands, you're gonna slowly move it out, okay? Or your hands outward. And that will spread the clay out. And if you see that one side's getting thin and one side's still thick, just move to that side. And there you go. If you see an area that's a little thick, just kind of roll it out. Try to get this as even as possible. And there you have it. There's a snake. So we're going to make a couple of these. Um, it's good to have a few going before you start your maze. That way you can really start playing around with the design right away. So I'm going to make a few more of these Play-Doh snakes. Um, I wanted to mention too, I am, um, so before I became, before I started teaching and writing and doing all this stuff <laughs> online, I was an architect and a furniture designer. And so that's one of the reasons I really like this project because I feel like there's so much, it's so much like the design process. Um, when I worked in different uh, studios, we would really play around with ideas. There's a certain part of the design process where you just really try things and you experiment and it's not the final design and so that's what this kind of this project is is like it's kind of like what we call a prototype which is a type of it's like a a project before you finalize everything and you make it perfect it's it's kind of like your test project so we're making a even though this will end up being our final maze this is kind of like a prototype and how designers work on prototypes Okay, so we've got uh, three coils. Let's do one more. Let's do this one, and then we're going to get started. If you don't have a marble, by the way, you can also use um, like a large bead. You can also, I haven't done this but I have for this project, but I've done it before in other projects. You can take a piece of tin foil and roll it between your uh, hands or under your hands like this into a really tight ball. And that's also a way you can kind of make your own 
um, marble, I guess, if you don't have one. I know not everyone has marbles. I We have a lot of marble runs in my house, so I tend to have a lot of marbles. <laughs> but I know that's not something that all of you keep around and keep handy. Okay, so I've got four snakes. Let's take this, and I'm going to move these to the side, and we're going to start designing. Oh, let me turn my lights on. I don't even know if those helped. Okay. <laughs> so what I tell my students, you guys, is I say start your maze with by choosing a starting point. So usually a maze, you know, winds and turns and there's challenging parts and there's dead ends. So the first thing you should do is really pick the, the place at which you're going to begin your maze. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm going to choose this spot as my starting point and this is my end. You can mark it with a pencil or you can just simply remember it. Then you can start laying in your Play-Doh snakes, okay? So you're gonna lay it in there and you're gonna kind of gently press down. You don't need to really squish it, okay? In fact, if you really squish it, you're gonna make a space for your marble to jump over the wall. So you wanna kind of keep it as thick as you can and then you can start modifying it. So you can start changing the shape of it, okay? As you do that, you should always be aware, can my marble actually fit through the space? So here I've got a wide aisle for the marble to go down. Uh, and can it go into this little loop there? Oops, let's see, it can, okay. If I made this too tight, I might create like an area where my marble can't even enter. So you have to think about that as you design it. How Can the marble fit through this? And then we're gonna start, we're just gonna continue adding all these walls. Um, and you can make this as complicated as you want, as simple as you want. I do want you guys to make sure that you are, let me test this here, that's a pretty tight fit there, that if you don't like something, you aren't afraid to just rip it up, take it up, start again, change it, modify it. Like I said, this, this, this project is really about modifying and changing things so you get the design that you really want, okay? So here I'm just kind of playing around. You might, if you feel up for it, if that's the way you like to design, you could design this. Um, you could have a better idea of this in advance. So you could kind of plan it out in pencil or you can just get in here and do this like so, okay? And we wanna press it down, like I said, just enough so that it sticks, but not enough so that we're, we create any areas where the marble can um that are too low the marble can jump over now if you're using straws let me show you the straws for these we can basically use them similarly only if we need to we can cut them so we trim them if we want to create short walls obviously with straws you're not going to be able to get these kind of curvy parts um but you can still do some fun stuff so if you're using straws, I'm going to make a dead end. You want to take them and you want to glue them down. Now, since, again, this is about the design process and modifying things, I would suggest that you use a minimal amount of glue at first because if you want to change it, you want to be able to pick it up really quickly without having to rip apart your whole box. Okay, you can use hot glue. If you use white glue, that's a little easier to modify. Another fun little thing you can do with Play-Doh is you can make bumpers. So if you've ever played pinball, um, there's always a lot of like little bumpers that your ball can bounce off of. So I can make bumpers like that. Okay, so let's see if I, my marble can go through this. Oh, I, I forgot I had one in here already. <laughs> you can also do two marbles. So it looks like it's gonna be able to, oh, not gonna go through. Will it go through here? Nope. So, what do I have to do, you guys? I have to modify this. It's totally fine. All I've got to do is just figure out what, where it needs to be positioned so that my marble can go through successfully. Great. Now I can go through both. Cool. And that's really what the design process is, you guys. It's all about making mistakes, changing things, so that you end up with the design that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more straws in here and then I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, 
You can do, I mean, you could do really like fun stuff too with the straws is kind of fun because you can get some cool linear designs. Woo! Let's see, I could probably, if I did a combination of straws and Play-Doh, I could get some interesting things happening here without having to glue my straws down. My students, our students usually do some really neat things with the, uh, these mazes. So we'll have kids do um, like bridges. Let me show you. Like they'll do cool bridges here that the, the um, marble has to pass under. Sometimes they'll do, they'll purposely put like a secret passage here. So like if you're clever enough, Maybe there's like a shortcut you can cut through there because it's a low point. So there's a lot of fun things you could do. You could theme this, you guys. You know, make it a labyrinth if you're into, um, like if you're into, I don't know, what are my kids into? Minecraft, <laughs> Roblox, Piggy. You could theme this to whatever is like something that you're interested in right now. Um, castles. Uh, all kinds of different things. Let me get some more. Let me get a little bit more going. I, I feel like I need a dead end here or else you're going to be able to shortcut it out of here. So let's make that with this purple. We haven't used purple yet. And I'm going to do that with the Play-Doh. There we go. This area looks a little bare. Why don't we put another bumper in? So I should, I'm going to mention now that these, you know, Play-Doh does dry out. So after a little while, like I would say a week or two, it's going to dry out enough where it's probably not going to be, um, it, it might flake off of your marble maze. And that's okay. I mean, this is really about the process of making, not necessarily, ooh, let's make that hard, not necessarily the, um, having something that's going to last forever. Right, you guys? So, okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like this combination of Play-Dohs and Play-Doh and straws. I may have to change, I might have to add that when we go back into uh, school and we have classes again. I think my students would really, really like that. All right, let's see if I can get my marble through this thing. Okay. By the way, I should mention, always save these. Uh, I save my Play-Doh containers, they always come in handy for different things. I made a spin art machine, which is one of the projects I need to get up on the blogs. It's, it's really fun. And we use Play-Doh lids as part of it. So don't throw these guys away. They're colorful, they're useful. All right, so let's see if we can do this. And we're going through. Now, oh, dead end. I went through the tunnel, around. I think I need to make something here so that you can't get through there easily. Can't go there. Whoops, dead end again. And I made it, yay! <laughs> Let me modify that little part and we are we're gonna be good to go here. Look at that. Okay, so I just need to glue that, we're good. So keep going with this, you guys, and make it as complicated and as intricate as you want. Then challenge a brother or sister, a mom or dad to, do, to, to complete your maze and uh, see if they can do it. All right, you guys, I'm going to turn this around and we're going to wrap it up. Okay. All right, that's it for today, you guys. A um, couple things before we leave. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I always love that. It's nice to be back uh, and see new people when I um, when I log back into YouTube. I love to see all the new uh, people coming to, to see these kinds of projects. I love uh, reaching out to families and getting you guys some cool stuff on YouTube, um, especially creative projects that your kids will want to try and do. So uh, that's basically what I wanted to share with you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Again, I will see you back on Tuesday and Thursday next week. I'll drop the links below to the uh, giveaway as well as my new TikTok account so you can follow me over there if that's your thing. Um, if not, as always, you'll find me here on YouTube. It'll be Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 p.m. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend, you guys. Take care. Bye.